Welcome to your town and the arts are the answer. This is such an exciting day for me because I'm here with Garland Thompson, Jr. And we're focusing on April as uh, upcoming the um, National Poetry Month. And we're going to take it in different segments, talking about the National Poetry Out Loud competition. We're going to talk about the poetry slams that Garland produces. And we're going to talk about his own wonderful work. Garland is a poet, an actor, a producer. That's the official word. But I know him also as an extraordinary teacher, a really amazing mentor, and just a great person to have in our community. Garland, we're so, so lucky. I know right now you have a bi-coastal situation, mm -hmm. and for as long as we can keep you here, and as long as the time we have, we're really, really happy to have you here. Thank you, Paula. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, Garland, let's start out then with the poetry out loud. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that happened is that, you know, you and I have known each other since um, I was involved with First Night, mm -hmm. and you were involved in that program. But I still remember getting the, I, I physically remember that phone call that I got, and somehow mm -hmm. I, I, I pictured you in your car at the time, I'm hoping you pulled over, <laughs> and <laughs> especially because that was back in the day, mm -hmm. and, and you were all excited about this program that we had to do, mm -hmm. and I didn't know much about what you were talking about. It was my very early days at mm -hmm. the Arts Council, mm -hmm. but I was definitely willing to just jump in and do whatever it was. Mm -hmm. It's turned out to be the Poetry Out Loud competition for Monterey County has also been really, really extraordinary. So can we talk for a minute about why did you call me that day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. I, boy, I remember that day almost like it was yesterday. Uh, it was just one of those things where I, you know, I had just finished teaching a poetry class, yeah. ironically, in Spreckles. So I was on my way home and listening to NPR in the car, all things considered, like I normally do. And uh, this, it happened to be Poetry Out Loud month uh, while they were doing uh -huh. the finals in Washington, D.C. So they were doing a story about it on NPR, on the national news. So I heard it, and I'm driving, and I'm listening, and I'm going like, this is amazing. <laughs> we need to do that here. And literally, I mean, I just, I don't know, I kind of don't know what possessed me, but I was possessed. I pulled over. <laughs> you did, I did pull over. Pull over. <laughs> I pulled over, I whipped out my phone, and the first person I thought to call was you. So oh. I called the Arts Council. I had no clue. I did not expect to get you. I <laughs> thought I was going to get an answering machine <laughs> or somebody else, and I was just going to leave a quick message, and hopefully I'd get a chance to talk to you about it. But you happened to pick up the phone that day. It was probably back <clears> in the <throat> day when I might have been the only person there most days. I think that could have been. <laughs> that was definitely the early days. Yeah. And so uh, you got on the phone with me, and uh, great. Gratefully, thankfully, you took the time and listened. I don't know what you were doing, but you made time and you listened. And it's true, like you said, I don't think you really understood what it was I was talking about, but yeah. you could, I guess, feel the fervor of the passion Definitely. from me. And we had a relationship because I had been working for you for First Night Monterey, yeah. and we'd done many poetry slams yeah. and poetic events. Yeah. So I guess I, you know, you, I wasn't just somebody out of the blue, but right. you didn't know. Right. So, uh, so you gave me the, you gave me the two minutes uh, I needed, and you said, let's go for it. And right there from that phone call, I knew we were on, we, you said yes, and we were on our way. So let's talk about, for people who don't know, let's talk about the, um, the Poetry Out Loud Championship as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's national, mm -hmm. it's produced um, primarily by the National Endowment for the Arts, mm -hmm. but then they reach out to their partners mm -hmm. uh, in each state. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. my main liaison is with the California Arts Council. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about that tiered structure and how that process works? It takes uh, six months, I think, something like that, to, to go from the local level filtering back up to the national level. Is that about right? It can take as long as that. It can also take much a shorter time. Oh. People, uh, schools <laughs> can actually do it in a couple of months. The actual, um, the National Endowment of the Arts, as you said, produces it, and they've also produced a curriculum to go along with mm -hmm. it. That's so amazing. Yeah. Exactly. And so the full-on lesson plans and everything, and these can be done in as little as 20 minutes out of a period, okay. and they can basically go about two and a half or three weeks, they're designed, if you do it straight through. Uh, you can break it up, and that's what some schools often do, uh -huh. they'll break it up, and so that's why they'll take a little bit longer. Uh, but it's a great thing because it starts at the classroom level. So individual schools, individual, individual schools, teacher has to sign up. Exactly, yeah. and so you get an individual uh, teacher, individual school, they do it in the classroom, 
they have a competition within the classroom, then they have a competition within the school. They determine who is their school champion, uh -huh. and then the school champion then goes to compete against all the other school champions in a given county. And then from there, whoever wins that competition, they then go on to represent uh, the county in the state competition up in Sacramento. And then if they get lucky or if they're good enough and they win that competition, then they get a free all-expense-paid trip to Washington, D.C. Now, that actually happened for us one, one year, right? Can you uh, talk about... Not just um, three years. Well, we have... <laughs> um, yes, mm -hmm. right, so we... Mm -hmm. But you got to go one yes, year, right? Yes, I got okay. to go one year. Right, mm -hmm. so can you talk about um, what was special about those, those um, students mm -hmm. that, in, in your minds, that, that really helped propel them to, to win? Uh, California, I'm from Boston, I'm from Massachusetts, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have a really good perspective on how big California is. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. that I've been with the, at the Arts Council for a while, I also have a, a good sense of how big Monterey County is relative to the state. Mm -hmm. So for one of our students to succeed, um, not just at the local level, but then at the state level, and have the opportunity to compete nationwide. Mm -hmm. That is such a big deal. It's, yeah. And uh, you will probably be too humble to say, but I can say that in many of these years, you've been the mentor for our students mm -hmm. and help, helping them to shape how they've done their, their work. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that's been why we've been really successful at, at the state mm -hmm. level and mm -hmm. then getting these kids to Washington. Mm -hmm. So can you just give people a feel, though, for um, I think one of the things that's important to call out is that the students haven't written their own work and they're mm -hmm. just sharing their poems. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of process. It, it's, it's highly structured and uh, it's so structured it might seem like kids wouldn't really be interested, mm -hmm. but instead they're f really finding a, a way to make it really powerful. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell us, particularly of the one that you went to, is when you mm -hmm. took them as far as Washington, took a particular person? Mm -hmm. Well, it's an, it's an excellent program, and you're right. It is not the students' actual poetry and actual writing. What they are doing is they are picking poems from an anthology that the National Endowment of the Arts provides them every year. It's about six or 700 poems in this anthology. So they all do have a lot of choice. They have a huge range of choice, yeah. from all the way from classics going back to Shakespeare. Yeah. Uh, etc. all the way up to contemporary poets mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and everything in between yeah. and many different styles and many different genres so they get to pick a piece and what they're basically asked to do is to go through and find a piece that speaks to them something that they can relate to or that or that somehow when they read it they get a little tingle or uh -huh, something uh -huh. you know they get something That's starts to go on you know yeah. and really it starts right there because once they agree to search for a poem mm -hmm. They're hooked. They're in. Yes. Uh -huh. They're in, and they start to look at it, and they start to go, "Wow!" They read this poem, and they go, "Whoa!" Then they go, "This poem." Oh, they don't really say anything. Oh, but this poem, man, this poet really nailed it for me. Oh my God! I have an uncle that did exactly that same thing. So they're already starting to explore all the elements yes. and the concepts and the yes. content and. Yes perspective, yes. even just in that first little bit. Yes. That's, that's really, really great. The whole program is designed to awaken a love of poetry and literature uh -huh. within the students. Um, it comes from a former NEA chairman, Dana Joya, who is now the California State Poet Laureate, uh -huh. uh, came from an idea that he had because he remembered uh, when he was a child, his grandmother used to read him poems. Oh, wow. And so he had that connection. It was a special connection with her, yeah. so there was that family connection. But then the poems him th themselves really got to him, and he ended up becoming a nationally known poet. Yeah, yeah. So he wanted to do something to bring that love, foster that love, that he that, that same love that he got from his grandmother, that same magical feeling he got when yeah. she was reading him those poems, and then when he began to read them and write them himself, he wanted to share that. So he created this program, and so um, with the anthology, they, it starts right there. They get to pick the poems, and then they start to break them down. There's a whole curriculum established, as we said, yeah. and they basically, they analyze the poems. Mm -hmm. They analyze them, they memorize them, they sleep with them, they eat with <laughs> them, they live with them, yeah. um, they rehearse them, mm -hmm. um, and it's really a wonderful thing because uh, in the process of doing that, 
they're sharpening up their own skills yes. in many different ways, their yeah. skills of perception. They're actually literally creating new neural pathways yeah. in their brains when they're doing that's this. What we know that better we, now than ever before. That's right. Yeah. The scientific really evidence is there to prove Very it. So solid. that's what they're actually doing. And so when that starts happening in the brain for a young person, there's yeah. an actual physical feeling that goes along with it. And then it also uh, allows them to work with friends, because oftentimes they'll work with friends. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, part. they'll oh, work with good. friends. They'll hang out with friends. They'll, they'll, they'll perform for their friends wow. personally and say, oh. what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And then in the process also, um, the uh, NEA provides funds to the various arts, state arts councils, which yeah. allow then local arts councils right, like right. yourself to then provide uh, for paid mentors mm -hmm, to come mm -hmm. in, or coaches as we call yeah. them. And so that's what I've been. I've been yeah. a coach and a mentor in addition to the coordinator for the program. Mm -hmm. um, so we get to go in and basically we have a session with them. We'll have a half an hour or 45 minute session with them. They'll perform for us. We'll talk about what they're doing. We'll give them pointers. And it's not about telling them how to perform it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's about helping them discover the best way for them to perform it. Does everybody do it your way? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. When I'm watching them, I'm mesmerized at how much they seem to embody the writer. Mm -hmm. That there's a, almost a fusion of themselves uh, and their identity and, and this connection to, to the writer. Yes. And I find that that is one of the most powerful gifts that we can give the youth mm -hmm. is to have that perspective. You know, I am me and I have these ideas, but now I have a better understanding from the inside mm -hmm. of somebody who lived at a different time or at least mm -hmm. is a different age, mm -hmm. maybe different experiences. So they find, I think they find both the, um, the similarities like mm -hmm. you're talking about, look at something that's really going to call to you, mm -hmm. and yet they're also aware of the differences, maybe mm -hmm. that they have a, a little bit of an easier time these days than you mm -hmm. might have at another time. Mm -hmm. Maybe they there's something that they hadn't really thought about directly, but is kind of weighing on them in the back of their mind mm -hmm. that this really mm -hmm. really helps with. Mm -hmm. And um, so so, but that but that I didn't know that that's how you present it. And I actually do. If, if everybody is not doing that same thing, <laughs> you might want to bring that back to the system. That, this, this works. This is mm -hmm, good. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a, uh, you know, I, I guess it comes from my years of being in theater, uh -huh. and I do direct as well, yeah. and it's never really about telling someone how exactly step by step to do something. In, in film it gets a little bit more like that because you have camera angles, you have specific things that have to happen, uh -huh. but be and even in theater, beyond specific things that have to happen, like I need you to go, go on this side of the set and uh -huh. pick up a glass right now because something's going to happen. Yeah. But beyond that, it's not really about telling someone how exactly to do it. What you, as a director or as a mentor, as a coach, are trying to get is the essence of the person to come through with the material, to, to connect with the material so that their essence infuses the words that they're saying and yeah. the actions that they're doing, yeah. and then it becomes their own. This is, I, I wanted to point out that one of the things that I, I came across just this morning was um, a quote from the Poetry Out Loud national champion, mm -hmm. uh, Megan Kim, mm -hmm. and uh, she talked about that. She talked about the two-way exchange, mm -hmm. that she expected to be the one who would give voice to the author, and uh, what she found in that process is a lot of what you're talking about, where she felt like those words were helping her shape her own voice. Mm -hmm. And and again, that, that exchange, that idea of exchange, um, and then exchange further with the audience, mm -hmm. um, I felt it, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I think mm -hmm. all of us do. Um, if you, you feel all of that when, when you're in the audience and you're absorbing um, that process. Mm -hmm. So so even more than a competition, even though that's fun and we like winning, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's, it's really about that process of discovery and sharing, yes. isn't it? Like so yes. much of the, what the arts are all about. Yes, that is exactly what it's about. Um, because that's, uh, that's what happens in general when we, whenever we reread any kind of writers, a novelist that we like, a, a, um, a monologist, a playwright that we like, those words come out and speak to us. So as adults, we get to find that whenever we go to a bookstore, we pick up a book, or 
you know, we decide if we're interested in writing scripts, we write a script. So we get to do that. But how do you foster that in kids? Yeah. Right? In young people. Um, especially young people who are, you know, not necessarily going to be interested in the classics, yeah. whatever the classic yeah. thing is, right? Just All, a classic. Yeah, just, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so this is a great structured way within, within a classroom, within a learning environment. Yeah for them to be able to make that connection with a writer that says something to them, even if that writer lived 500 years ago, which is amazing yeah. when you think about it, which can be mind-blowing for a kid who can pick up a writer, maybe Shakespeare or something, and go, oh my God, I totally understand where that guy's coming from. My uncle did that, my mom is yeah. like that, I, my world is like that, things yeah. haven't changed. And so they make that connection, and that connection lives on through the rest of their lives. And they begin to realize it through literature, through mm -hmm. arts, through words, yeah. through communication. You can change your world. Yeah. You can change your life. You can change people's lives around you. You can make everybody's life better. Yeah. You can make your life better. So it's really a fantastic um, I've just found it's just a fantastic way to get kids into that discovery process that they wouldn't necessarily go on mm -hmm. on their own yeah. if they weren't given the opportunity. You know, and that's again, that's also what it's about as far as being a coach and a mentor and bringing this program to the schools. It's about giving them an opportunity to express themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're going to find, people are going to find ways to express themselves one way or another. Everybody needs to express themselves, yeah. every human being no matter who you are. Um, the only question really then becomes is, how do they express themselves? Mm -hmm. Do they express themselves positively or do they express themselves negatively? Yeah. You know, we just saw a few weeks ago, um, a couple weeks ago, how unfortunately a young man expressed himself incredibly negatively yeah. at the, with the Parkland yeah. shooting, yeah. right? Incredibly yeah. negative way of expressing himself. But that is, in a sense, what he was doing. My goal as a coach, as a mentor, as a producer, as someone who likes to work with kids and young people is to give them opportunities, positive opportunities to express mm -hmm. themselves, positive ways. Yeah. You can be the angriest person in the world and be completely justified in your anger. But anger that manifests, if you manifest that anger, express that in, an, in a destructive way, whether that's to yourself or to other people, then that does nothing for anybody. And right. it certainly doesn't solve the problem that made you angry in the first place. Right, right. Right? So it is about doing everything we can as adults to give young people not just hope and not just say, oh, you can do whatever you want, Generic, you can be the yeah, president, yeah. you can be whatever. Yeah. No, 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 let's get real about this, okay? If you, it sounds crazy, but if you read this poem and if you study it and if you perform it, you're going to find out so many things yeah. that you never knew existed and you're going to be turned on and people are going to love you for it. This is the thing that I love the most about showcases and exhibitions and performances. Mm -hmm. Kids go all the way to um, mastery, and mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. really, really, really powerful. And then mm -hmm. that sharing process. Yes. So, um, so we'll talk more about your own wonderful work. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your role as a mentor, as a coach, as a leader in our community, caring so much about those young people. And in our next segment, we'll talk about the Poetry Slams mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how that's a whole nother vehicle mm -hmm. for expression, sharing, and all those good things. Mm -hmm. uh, so thanks, Garland. Thank My you. My pleasure.